This is a monumental occasion, everybody. This is the first time we have ever seen in studio Kaleido 2 or Kaleido Plus, the current color technology, and Kaleido 3. This is the latest possible color technology. To give you some quick specs on just the screen, let's check it out. On the left will be the Kaleido 2 panel, and on the right will be the Kaleido 3 panel. The Kaleido 2 panel has 226 ppi in black and white, and 117 ppi in color. The Kaleido 3 panel has 300 ppi in black and white, and 150 ppi in color. When we first met with E-Ink and Fujitsu at our meeting in Japan, they told us that Kaleido 3, as it stood last November, suffered from a 66.6% loss in color PPI, meaning that if this was 300 PPI, the maximum color could only be 100. Big Me has corrected this, and with software and with the update in the panels since November, they have achieved only half loss, which is significantly better. Looking at these two screens as is, let's go to the home screen here, and actually, no better than the actual standby screen. Look how different the backgrounds are. This is a sloshy blue-gray with a tinge of green and a little bit of tan around the sides because this is the previous panel. This new panel looks almost like as gray as an e-reader, and it's consistent. There's no fuzziness. And don't worry, guys, if you're interested in Kaleido 3, we are going to be doing a ton of coverage on this in the days to come. So if we don't cover everything now, don't worry about it. We will show you. There will be something for everyone in the upcoming videos. Look how dry this looks. Look how vibrant he looks here. Look at the lines on the fern in the background. That's just, there's so much green loss here but it is so popping and crisp. You can't even see the circle cushion, but now that Kaleido 3 has come out, you can. It's just so much more refined. So let's dive in a little bit. And again, we're just looking at the screen today. We're gonna to be doing a review on this and we've already done a review on this. So we're just gonna keep it about the screen. Look how vibrant and clean the lines have become where the black meets the white, aka how much more of a stark contrast you can see. Over here, really the biggest takeaway is that Kaleido 2, now pitted up against this, looks like it has a sheen of almost like a, a half translucent piece of paper on top, like a piece of wax paper or like some dust. It's very cloudy when pitted up against this everything always looks good as is and then when you get something better you're like okay now i'm seeing the parallels this looks very green and we're both glow lights off and everything right now this looks very clean and hindered and it looks very far away this looks so deep this panel looks much higher towards the surface the contrast is better it's softer there's no blurring around the corners and everything just looks so crisp and clear the blacks are almost completely absent here whereas here they're so present we're just going to open the same thing on both of these to keep things completely fair across the test now putting these side by side and we have to do a refresh it's almost not even a contest at this point look how noticeably different they are and let's just over analyze everything here so you can see where the oranges meet the yellows it's very just sloshy and blended it's almost looking like a des screen there's not a lot of shadows and low lights and highlights and what i mean by that is that this looks very desaturated around the head whereas here you see shadows and depth so much more clearly than you would on here. Same with the hairs around the green part at the back of the head. This looks just like one sandy patch on a map showing you where a desert is. Look at the nose here, the shine of the nose, the highlights on the bridge of the nose. Look at where the lines of the hairs, the individual hairs meet right by the beak versus this that just gets fuzzed out. Just look at the blacks 
versus the blacks on here. The greens are more vivid, which is a going trend of problem with devices like Kaleido and ACEP Advanced Color E-Paper and Spectra and Gallery. The greens are always kind of suffering, but you don't see anything wrong basically look at the pixelation where they try to add a gradient of blue versus the green there's no pixelation here it's a complete perfect gradient it's so much higher resolution and higher color vibrancy that at this point it's not even a contest when you look at a still image Another thing that we want to say is that because this has significantly lower PPI and this one has 300, you will see just by looking at a couple places over here that you can really see the honeycomb shaped pixels on the Kaleido 2. Whereas on Kaleido 3, because the pixels are so much closer together and densified, you don't really catch a lot of the screen's texture and mostly just see the image itself. Let's dissect what we're looking at here. So we've done similar color splotches and mixed kind of mosaic with the exact same settings on both of these. Let's look at Kaleido 2 first. You'll see around the edges it is very, very pixelated. And where you see the light blue meet the yellow, you see some overlap and some filled in spaces with some black and white lines as it tries to blend itself. Whereas on K3, it's seamless. It's almost like you're using thick paint overlapping each other every step of the way. The sides where the curved edges are, which are more susceptible for pixelation, are very round and there's almost no issues with bleeding into each other. The colors are very much completely separate from each other. We have to look at ebooks because a lot of people are going to be reading on these. Much like we said at the top end of the video, this is very green. It's look at the, you know what you can use as a color balance for yourselves at home? Look at the white around the review table here. That is true white, and we use it to point the camera at to do color balance before shots. Look at that versus that, and then look at that versus that. It's fairly different. This is very sloshy, almost like a hodgepodge of greens and blues and browns, whereas this is very reminiscent of an ebook reader like a Kindle or a Barnes & Noble Nook. As you change pages, it's not really going to be any slower or faster than the other. It's just going to depend on what's running in the background. These are both Android, remember, but it's not that. It's the actual text as well. So clicking there, we can go to the font settings and choose the biggest possible font. I believe we can stretch it all the way to the end there. Let's add some bold too so we can really get those blacks and see how it looks. Now when we get it, this looks a little bit more blurry than this. And if we look at the O's and the H's versus the ones here, this one's not going as big as this one for some reason. It actually is currently maxed out. Could be a software thing, but it's all going to depend on the app you're using. You will see that it's really not even close at this point. Yet again, really anything that K3 throws at the wall it's going to just be better than K2 because you're moving into a new generation, but it's not a different technology like it is between Kaleido and Gallery. This is still within the realm of Kaleido. So we've simply advanced. We have gone from this that was the past couple years of focus into this, and it's just so much better. Final thing we want to do before we wrap up is play around with the glow light. So we are at full warm light in HD mode on both of these. Let's just look at look at it. I mean, it, it really just does speak wonders how well balanced this is. And then how just grossly overexposed this is. Again, when you take this at face value, it looks great. But then you get something so much better an inch away 
and you start to draw these very conclusive parallels. Now let's go ahead and mix both of the lights to do maximum brightness exposure on both of these. This one is very overexposed. You see a lot of light, a ton of actual brightness shining through. Whereas this one, you don't lose any of the blacks. You don't get that overexposed starts to shine into the lens of the camera kind of thing. You also see the pattern on his shirt here. There are very clearly dots in between each individual dot, whereas all of that goes away due to the pixel density on the Kaleido 3. Also, because this is so bright right now, you start to get that sparkly kind of look to the actual screen, as you see on these zoomed in images. And you can see very clearly here, there's almost no shadow around his hairline, whereas here it is very pronounced. One final test is going to remove the warm altogether and see the also infamous blue. Now, to be honest, this is brighter, but they're both still kind of both blue. So, th in terms of that, I mean, it is really far more vibrant on here, whereas this one, just every single thing when it comes to videos and pictures and manga and everything just looks washed out. It really does, and what that means is that everything's just kind of stripped away of all the detail and it's all gone you can see there's no shading around his face where the shadow of the binoculars are whereas you see all the shading and the highlight of his nose and the low lights of underneath above the lip it's all gone here and you can bring some of that back with the e-ink center off and on depending on how you change your settings but it just cannot be refuted that color e-ink with kaleido 3 looks better it just looks significantly better in every measurable metric. Highlights, low lights, vibrancy, hindrances in your viewing experience, it just looks absolutely gorgeous to the point where there really is no more benefit or point to go with Kaleido 2. You might find a price lower on a Kaleido 2 panel now, but again, in every single possible category, you can throw any sort of rating at Kaleido 3 takes the cake.